Good morning. It is Friday the 16th of September. Today we move on from the book of Job. We jump one book back in the Old Testament to the book of Esther. A fantastic book, one of my favorite books and a really fascinating read. For example, the book of Esther never mentions God by name. It never mentions the worship of God or the following of, of God. And yet, I want to suggest to you that the very absence of the word of God or the name for God in this book actually highlights um, God. Because really the book, again, talks about the faithful remnant of Jewish people who retain their faithfulness, who follow the Jewish customs. Um, they are the people of God at the time and they who remain faithful to God are delivered by God. That seems to be the kind of broad takeout and simple summary of what the book of Esther is all about. The main characters in Esther, apart from Esther herself and her uncle Mordecai, who are Jews and who are part of this faithful remnant and who are in exile um, in the uh, winter capital city of Susa. The other um, protagonists in the story is, of course, King Xerxes himself, his queen, Vashti, who gets deposed, at least temporarily so, um, various nobles and rulers, possibly even army commanders. We'll come back to that a little later. And then, of course, an Amalekite by the name of Haman. And, of course, the Hamal Amalekites are mortal enemies of the Jews. They were the first people group to attack the Jews on their, um, their return, the exodus from Egypt, and they have always been seen as mortal enemies of the Jews, out to destroy the Jews at any possible opportunity. And in fact, sometimes in Jewish literature, if you want to describe someone as being really bad, then you simply refer to them, whether they are or not, refer to them as being an Amalekite. Haman is an Amalekite, and it comes through late in the story that is immediately he knows that Vashti and Mordecai are Jews. He said, uh, not Vashti, Esther and Mordecai are Jews. He sets out to destroy them. Anyway, the story starts with King Xerxes throwing a huge party. Parties are a central theme to the book of Esther. And it seems to me that uh, possibly um, this could signify, and this is some of my own thinking, the kind of leadership and rule that King Xerxes applied. He is the son of King Darius, who we have met before for the Babylonian exile. And in fact, Babylon is um, one of the summer capitals of the Persian Empire. The story set in Susa, it's set with the, the son to Darius, um, that is uh, Xerxes, sorry, and um, Queen Vashti. Historically, um, they are real people. Xerxes is um, somewhat of a mashup of a Greek name for the Persian king, and, and, that, and which Persian name I cannot pronounce. And there's also a Hebrew name for uh, King Xerxes, but we all know him as King Xerxes. He has a son, one assumes it is by Queen Vashti, um, and his name is Artaxerxes. Xerxes. Um, Xerxes throws a party, which is a common theme, and in that party there is great cavorting and alcohol and lots of food. And in the midst of this, Xerxes gets a little carried away with himself and he demands his wife comes and parades her beauty amongst all the people, a large gathering. And, and she refuses. And of course, with our modern mindset, we think, well, how incredibly uh, misogynistic even is King Xerxes to do this and that therefore maybe Vashti has the right to refuse. Um, either way, at the time, this is seen as being a bad thing and the ruling is that she should be banished and a new wife should be sought. Thus sets the scene for a search for beautiful women and out of that arises Esther, but we'll come to that later. This gathering historically, as I've said, um, is recorded and King Xerxes and uh, Queen Vashti, uh, sometimes referred to by a slightly different name, um, does appear to exist in the history books. And there is the belief, because shortly after the setting of this, which again, as I say, is pretty conclusively proved from historical records and archaeological records, 
Um, King Xerxes heads off on a big military campaign against Greece. It fails miserably. And a little over 100 years later, um, Alexander the Great, the great Greek um, commander, comes and he defeats the Persians. Um, so it could be that part of this feasting is the army generals and, and rulers gathering together to plan the campaign. And they take a long time about it and they love to have parties. And it wonders, and again, this is my thinking, I wonder whether the um, focus on all the parties and the drinking doesn't perhaps reference somehow the rule, the weak rulership that Xerxes um, applied. Um, historically, we know that Vashti produced um, sons, one of whom is Artaxerxes, and it would appear that Vashti, who goes in the historical record a little silent, perhaps that's the reference that we get in Esther, the book of Esther, to her being banished, but it would appear she comes back in favor some time later, and she exerts a tremendous amount of control over her son, Artaxerxes. Um, historically, Interestingly, there's no reference or, or, or definitive record of Esther at all, except for that little moment of silence in the historical record. So there's no doubt that Esther existed, um, but it is interesting that historically she is not referenced. So um, one assumes perhaps that she really did become the queen, but not for a terribly long period of time. And the book of Esther shows the faithfulness of God's people who hold fast to God and how God will use them in powerful positions or bring them into powerful positions to serve the purposes of God. And that's very much a theme we have been following in Acts. Um, today we looked in Acts 17, 1 to 15, of how um, uh, Paul goes to Thessalonica and he is chased away from there. The, the rebel uh, raise a, 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 a a mob to chase uh, Paul out. He, he goes through to Berea. He preaches and teaches there. And the Thessalonican rebel come through to Berea and they again cause um, chaos. Um, and again, that theme that we need to remain loyal and faithful to God and he will deliver us. So next week, we'll pick up more of the story of Esther. We're going to miss a little bit over the weekend, but I'll try and pick up on that. Uh, next week. Really exciting book. Folks, have a wonderful day and we'll chat again tomorrow. God bless.